Let's be frank with ourselves. Life is getting more hectic and demanding all the time. And we aren't getting younger. It seems that there's only one way to cope. Multitasking. A stupidly high amount of individuals all over the internet, known as gurus, life hackers, and clowns, are trying to convince you of that very fact. The idea behind it is that it increases the productivity and the efficiency of the individual. Even though thousands of people support the idea of multitasking, similar to flat earthers or moon truthers, it's still just a theory with no major study behind it. Ironically, it can be compared to juggling balls. Juggling one ball or doing one task is relatively easy and simple for your brain to focus on. Doing two tasks or juggling two balls splits your brain's focus, making one make more mistakes. And juggling three balls is just chaotic and it's going to be a mess no matter how good one is. You can truly debunk the false theory of multitasking. Let's start off with one ball and talk about what is multitasking and what happens within the brain. Secondly, let's add our second ball and talk about how multitasking affects people in their daily lives. And lastly, as we reach the end of our show and as it becomes relatively chaotic, let's talk about how multitasking has had a global impact. Now then, as we throw our very first ball up into the air, let's ask the question, what is multitasking? According to journalist Kristen Rosen, the term was first used in the 1960s to describe computer performance. The human brain, however, is not a computer, and the definition changed with it over time. Today, multitasking is defined as the ability to do multiple things simultaneously by Cambridge Dictionary, and it's typically used to describe human brains. Moreover, unlike computers, human attention is a very limited resource. The APA, or American Psychological Association, model visual attention like being like a flashlight. It can only be shown in one direction at any given moment. Our primary focus, what we're paying most attention to, is like the lightly freaked center of that flashlight. It can also be visualized as being like a camera lens. One can choose to narrow in their consciousness and focus on details, or narrow out to be aware of multiple things simultaneously but zooming in and out at the exact same time is physically impossible. Even though in this context, multitasking should be impossible, but for some reason, our brain still encouraged this action. Nicholas Carr states, our brain itself encourages the act of multitasking because it craves information. Even though in practicality, it's not that good at processing data, at the speed and intensity we find ourselves today. This is partially due to the fact that short-term working memory or short-term memory has a very small capacity. Working memory is essentially the context of one's consciousness at any given moment. What you're aware of right now is part of your working memory. What you're not aware of is not part of your working memory. The whole concept can be described in the 1950s book, The Magical Number 7. In that book, the author states that working memory can only hold seven pieces of information at any given moment, whether that be a seven digit number or the names of seven different people. The bottom line is, if one exceeds this number, their brain quite literally goes into a state called cognitive overload. In this state, information is exiting and entering information at the exact same time. This is caused by people intaking too much information, such as studying last minute for a test or doing note cards. In this state, people can't focus on anything because their brain doesn't have the function or capacity to do so. Now that we know why we multitask, and why biologically we shouldn't, let's talk about how multitasking affects us in our daily lives. According to the gurus that I've mentioned earlier, multitasking can be categorized into three different ways that we use it in our daily lives. One is doing two tasks simultaneously. Second is moving back and forth from one task to another. And lastly 
is doing a number of tasks in rapid succession. Now, everyone, including you and me, multitask in one of these forms every single day. Professor McFlynn Atkins states that we multitask because we crave information and FOMO. Wait, what's FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. We fear in missing out in events, tweets, Instagram notifications, emails, and text messages. FOMO is the same reason why people check their Instagram feed on the toilet or watch cute cat videos in their college lecture. We are impacted by digital distractions because of FOMO and the notifications we receive on our iPhone, computers, and smartwatches. This causes us to be constantly connected, which inherently isn't a bad thing per se, but we fail to look at the consequences. One prime example is attention span. According to Eva Turusta, attention span has, on, has been on a decline for years. The attention span of millennials has dropped to eight seconds, while the attention span of Gen Z, my generation, has dropped to a measly 2.8 seconds. She states that this is correlated to the increase of multitasking that people do through technology or other means. On top of all of this, my generation, Gen Z, spends at least six hours on their phone every day. That's almost a full-time job. I wonder what they're doing on there. Majority of the time when we do this is at work or at school. Now, I'm not trying to discredit people's way of life, but what I am saying is when, when people multitask at work at school to quench their boredom or to increase their productivity, the exact opposite happens, and they lose the productivity they want to achieve, or they have a sh sharp increase in boredom that they want to quench. Now that we know how multitasking affects us in our daily lives, and what it truly is. And as we reach the end of our show, let's add our third ball and talk about how multitasking can truly be chaotic per se. Up until now, we've been mainly focusing on the more goofy or fun aspects of multitasking, but it can be dangerous. Multitasking at your home or at your computer it's fine and relatively doesn't cause too much harm. But engaging in distractive actions behind the steering wheel doesn't only put the driver, but everyone else on the road at risk. According to the CDC, roughly nine people die every day because of inattentive driving. Meanwhile, another 1,000 people sustain an injury because they chose to take their eyes off the road. The most mundane action of talking to your passenger, daydreaming, or even listening to music can be very distracting. Car accidents happen in a measly amount of seconds. And a driver is expected to react instantaneously. These goofy car activities undermine this reaction time. The CDC states, over 400,000 people are injured every year because of inattentive car accidents. And 4,000 of them, sadly, don't make it out alive. On top of all of this, people all over the world, thousands of people in fact, sustain injuries because they chose to not focus on the activity at hand, ranging from cooking to using power tools. They believe they, that they can multitask. They believe that they can do two activities at the exact same time, such as texting and driving. But that's just a theory. The problem of multitasking isn't that it decreases productivity, but it distracts the user. Now, as we reach the end of our show, we can reflect back onto my speech and see that Juggling is a perfect analogy for multitasking because juggling one ball is simple. Two ball is relatively hard and three balls 
is just chaotic. As you just saw, when I tried to split my focus on each individual ball, I failed. And multitasking does the same thing to your brain. At the end of the day, multitasking is just a delusion that people just like myself fall for. It's a parasite that latches on to the thought process of increasing productivity and doesn't let go until it's too late. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to stop multitasking. In fact, I'm not telling you to do anything. What I am saying is, next time, when you have the thought process to multitask, always think of the consequences that come with the theory of multitasking. Thank you.